the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In church, please be seated. Welcome to our Sunday Eucharist here at St. Michael and St. Mary Magdalene, East Hampstead. It's good to welcome you both in church and at home. If you haven't already downloaded the order of service, you can do so by going to the parish website www.stmichaelseasthampstead.org.uk where you will find not only the order of service but also the notices for the week. If you would like to receive the notices electronically into your inbox, please contact the office and that can be arranged. Uh, I, Father Guy Cole, and Rev Roy will be leading your worship this morning. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me shall not hunger, and anyone who believes in me will not thirst. Lord, have mercy. The bread of God comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Christ, have mercy. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things 
which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First Book of Kings David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned for seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of his father David. Only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, God said to him, Because of you have asked this, and will not ask for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, and now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honour all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. This is the word of the Lord.
Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know us is perfect, not even me. Nobody can cast that first proverbial stone like that, that woman, do you remember, when she was surrounded by all those men that were accusing her, and Jesus said, let the one who is among you who is without sin cast the first stone. And nobody could. I think we agree that apart from the very human mistakes, the sort of things that all of us are likely to do from time to time, there are some pretty bad, evil things happening in the world today. Things that are totally in opposition to what God would want this world to be. Nations at war with nations, wiping out hundreds of innocent lives. Devastating, heart-rending scenes as the Taliban, under the leadership of Haibaldu Akhundzada, seized the total power in Kabul. Total, total, awful situation, as we all saw on our television screens, in that capital of Afghanistan, that crowded metropolis of over five million people last weekend. And also in the world, the planet is being used environmentally, but being done so in such a way that it is abused. Thousands are being wiped out through drought, drought and famine. Illnesses such as COVID and AIDS. People are involved in trafficking drugs. People are in relationships of a marriage or living together where there is frequent abuse, violence, verbal or otherwise from one to another, yet the abused person is frightened in this society to talk about it, just in case it happens again. Children are abused. People talk about others behind their back, as a result of which others became isolated and frightened. Mental abuse. The list goes on. All of them are bad as each other for different reasons. Totally in opposition to God's plan. And no one, not anyone, should inflict or have inflicted on them such awful treatment. Thank God, goodness, that those who really, truly believe in loving God would never do any of those things. For to do so is to respond to evil forces in the world. So let's talk about the Christian antidote to all of this. Love. Those two great laws that bound up in love of loving God and loving one another. If that happened, this world would be such a better place. None of those other things would be happening. We have that simple four-letter word that we are allowed to use. That word that God gives us. That love that is bound up every time we receive communion and receive Christ in our hands, those words from the gospel reading today, receiving the bread, the wine, the body and blood of Christ. And what love was there in that? The greatest love of all times. Wars would be no more. Physical and mental abuse would end. Children would be safe. No need for DBS checks, and we'd be able to live in peace and harmony. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. We all need to play our part in making our world governed by love. That love that Christ showed to us in so many ways. In Ephesians, Paul makes it very clear that our battle as Christians is a spiritual one against the forces of evil. When he talks, if you remember, about the spiritual weapons that we need. Do you remember that reading where he talks about needing the armour of of love. Faith, hope and love, as mentioned in Corinthians, the greatest of these is love, that love that we experience in Jesus. And Jesus chose bread and wine at the Last Supper, that way to remember him. He used relevant, understandable symbols. Bread was the staple food of survival, wine the staple food of celebration. And his first miracle involved water into wine as a wedding. He gave sustenance to them in order that the celebration could continue. 
And the same goes with our Eucharist, that time of celebration, that time of thanksgiving. That's what Eucharist means, that thanksgiving. It's a celebration of the richness of the Christian life we share and a life of unchanging love. It's as if we've been given a food voucher, but then found its purchasing power is limitless. It's as if we get a job as a cleaner in a large company, only to find that we get the same pay as the chairman. It's as if we were given one day to live, and then find it is the first day of the rest of our life. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives here today. A new life in Jesus that we must aim to use and do our very best in. We have a survival kit to do it. The survival kit is Jesus' sacrifice, Jesus' teaching. And that celebration speaks for itself when we hear of a list that talks about the whole kit and caboodle of the armour of Christ. If we were going on a long journey, we'd need a utility belt, a body warmer, a coat, a hat, hiking boots, a walking stick. I'd certainly need the walking stick bit. But they reflect, don't they, the sort of things that we need. A utility belt, a belt of truth. We need that truth of Christ in our life to survive. That body warmer to keep us warm. We need that sense of Christ through the Holy Spirit wrapped around us, keeping us feeling safe. The coat of faith, that shield of faith that represents protection for us. We need all that protection. We need the hiking boots and the walking stick. We need Jesus with us to support us on our journey. Keep our feet strong. We need to walk our journey of faith in the gospel of peace and above all in the gospel of love. to follow new life as we receive Jesus into our life as we have him as our travelling companion. And as we do that journey, we are in fellowship of faith with others on that walk with us. I love that short phrase, Dear Jesus, don't walk behind me. I can't lead. Don't walk in front I might not follow, but Jesus, just walk with me and be my friend. Our faith, which is more than merely a piece of bread and a sip of wine, once a week on a Sunday or maybe a Thursday, is about more about receiving Christ, receiving Christ yesterday, today and tomorrow. It's as if we've come to light a candle and then its floodlight shines on the rest of our week and indeed our lives. It's all about God's grace. It's all about God's love. His blessing on us. So let's not hold back from the celebration and joy. Let's make the most of every opportunity and be strong in the Lord and strong in his power. Because by being strong in the Lord, we are expressing solidarity with everything that is holy. All that is good in the whole world. And more than that, we are helping God to create the antidote to evil by embodying Christ and that love in our world, by living our lives through our faith in the good news of Jesus and in one another, our hope for the future in this world and the next, and above all, that love that is of God and of our neighbour. So let's use today as the start of the rest of our lives Make sure that we are doing our best to make that new start in our lives, to leave behind those things that we we need to leave behind and take up that great love that God gives us, that great gift that we have that we can share in our world to make it a better place. And by making our commitment to each other, to our community and to God. May we feed on God the Father's infinite love. May we drink of God the Son's new wine. May God the Holy Spirit inspire us to live in peace, friendship, faith and love.
Amen. In church, please stand. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, <coughs> you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Help us, like Solomon, to live our lives wisely. May we eat of that living bread we know in Christ. Hear the prayers of Christians throughout the world and especially those suffering persecution for their faith. In this parish, we pray for Father Guy as he prepares to move on and for us all as we learn to maintain the worship and life of the parish. Give strength to those with greater responsibilities, and may we all take our part. Lord, in your mercy. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local community. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray today for all those places suffering persecution, and especially Afghanistan, and for the whole world learning to cope with climate change. May we all learn to adapt and adopt our lifestyles to mitigate these changes. Lord, in your mercy, keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious, be with those who care for the sick, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, 
We hold before you all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them and those who care your healing touch. From those known to us today, we name David, Andrew, Maggie, Mari, John, Millie, Audrey, Dominic, Barbara, Liz, and all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Remember all those who have died, especially at this time, all those slain in Afghanistan and other places of conflict. In our community, we remember and mourn poor Paul, Maggie and Jan, who have died recently. And June Vernon, Walter Grove and Henry Vass, whose anniversary of death falls this week. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Michael, St. Francis and St. Clare and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In church, thank you for your giving towards the work of the church. If you're a UK taxpayer, please put your offering in the green envelope with the full address and postcode and sign it. This enables us to claim back the tax that you've already paid. There is a terminal at the back for contactless giving. If you're interested in joining the parish giving scheme, please contact the parish office. At home, thank you for your giving towards the work of the church. You can give towards the work of the church by going to the parish website, www.stmichaelseasthampstead.org.uk. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. In your service book, uh, the hymn number is incorrect. The hymn number is 422.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, I am there in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. God of life, receive with these gifts of bread and wine gratitude for your goodness, penitence for our pride, and dedication to your service. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, And with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these your gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith.
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Michael the Archangel, St. Mary Magdalene, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Let us pray to the Father through the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For whom we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself wholly to you. Permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world through the name of the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the Father, who fed the children with bread and honey in the wilderness, strengthen you in your pilgrimage to that promised land. Amen. May the Son, who gave his flesh for food and his blood for drink, keep you in eternal life and raise you up on the last day. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, help you to discern the Lord's body and empower you to proclaim his death until he comes again. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hymn 652.